Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. <coughs> we are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase them immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 158. Please turn to it. Page 158, problem number 12. These problems that you see on page number 158 are the exact same problem that appeared on the exact same page number in the first edition of the revised GRE. We have already solved every single problem in the first edition. I'm just redoing them. We're going to redo this problem at a little bit of a faster pace. If you need to watch the original solution at a slower pace, you will find the original solution that we did on day number 64. Like I said, right now I'm not going to go into too much detail. If you need to go at a slower pace, if you need more help, you can go and watch the original video as I just said on day number, just look for day 64. Here's what's, give, here's what's given to us on, on problem number 12. We are given a sequence of numbers. We are given a sequence of numbers. And we are told that the nth term nth term is defined as 1 over n plus or rather minus 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2 and the question simply is what's the sum let's put the question let's put the question over here was the sum of the first 20 terms. The question simply is, what's the sum of the first 20 terms? Whenever they give you a question like this, when they're asking for the sum of the first 20 terms, or the first, the first 50 terms for that matter, or even 10 terms, obviously there is a pattern there, you will begin to see something emerge there, uh, there is always something going on there and most likely what's going to happen is that some term will cancel each other out in between and the sum the sum of the term that they're looking for is not going to be the actual sum of the actual sum of the 20 different quantities this is much easier much quicker uh, and most uh, much uh, much more rational than what you might think it's not it's not a fair it's not a it's not a uh, it's not a mere mechanical addition of the 20 terms that's not what they're looking for here so we have to find some pattern, we have to find some system that is going on here. We'll see what happens. So we'll start with first term, second term, third term, and so on and so forth. And soon, and soon something will emerge. I don't know how long it will take before something will emerge. I don't know how long it will take before we begin to see something going on. Well, it depends. Sometimes it's the first two or three terms, sometimes the first four terms, maybe the first five terms. We'll see what happens. So the first term, for example, here, the first term here is 1 over 1. 1 over n, n is 1, 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 2, which is simply, which is simply 1 minus 1 over 3, 1 minus 1 over 3. Second term is going to be, again, 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 1, which is 2 plus 2, which is 4. As you can see, as you, as you can see, if you were to add first term and second term, Nothing would happen if we add first term and second term. If it, first term, the sum of the first two term, in other words, for, for, sum of the first two term is one plus a half minus a third minus a quarter. The only way we can find that sum is actually you add up the four quantity, and that's not the bloody point. As I just told you here, we're looking for some pattern here. Let's do one more. Something has to happen. The third term is going to be one over three. 1 over 3 minus 1 over 5. Voila! Do you notice anything? If we were to add up the first three terms, A1, the first term, second term, and third term, third term, if we were to add them up, first three terms, A2 plus A3, if we were to add up the first three terms, what do you notice? A2 plus A3, if you were to, oh my god, my handwriting is just atrocious. A3, what do you suppose would happen? What we'll get is 1 minus a third plus a half minus a quarter 
plus a, a third minus a fifth. Do you notice anything at all? What we notice is that we have a negative one third and we have a positive one third. They will cancel out. As you can see, something is going on here. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's do the fourth term. Let's do the fourth term. As we do A4, you should immediately see that in A4 we'll have 1 over 4, positive 1 over 4, and here we have a negative 1 over 4. Positive 1 over 4 and negative 1 over 4 will drop out. 1 over 4 minus 1 over 6. This is a positive 1 over 4, this is one over negative 1 over 4, this will drop out. When we add up these four terms, this negative 1 third and this will drop out. See, we're beginning to see a pattern here. But what we notice is that, as we keep on going, fifth term is going to be 1 over 5 minus a 1 over 7. Again, we see 1 over 5 and negative 1 over 5 here is a negative 1 over 5 here is a positive 1 over 5. And these two terms, as you can see, drop out. But first thing we should notice is that, as we keep on going, we'll see that we'll, like, we'll get 1 over, a, a fifth term is 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7. So fifth term is, begins with 1 over 5, then 1 over 6, then 1 over 7, 1 over 8, and so on and so forth. We will never get rid of this 1 over 2. This half, we should realize, is safe. It's never going to go away. It's never going to go away because this is a positive one. We'll never get a negative 1 half in this place. It's, it's, it starts out with 1 third, then 1 fourth. You see negative 1 third, negative 1 fourth, negative 1 fifth, negative 1 sixth, and so on and so forth. We will never get a negative 1 half. This positive 1 half is safe. And so is this one. What does this tell us? That tells us that the correct answer, whatever it is, Correct answer. I'm not going to write everything, this is silly. Correct answer, whatever it is, must contain. Correct answer must contain. Correct answer. Whatever it is, must contain this quantity one and a half there you go this one right here this one right here and a half it must contain this part and then we'll have something 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 what can we do with that information as you can look at the answer choices there it's always a good idea to pay attention to not just the question itself not just what is being asked but in a standardized exam it is equally important that we pay attention to how the answers are laid out because how much work you put into a problem is dictated not just by what kind of information is given to you and what is being asked, that's only half the story. It is equally important how the questions are laid out in front of you. How much work you put into a problem depends on how what is being asked and what is being told to you and how the answers are presented. As we look at the answer choices here, we'll see that only two answer choices have one plus a half. This tells us that we can kill, the answer is not C, D or E. Answer has to be, answer has to be, answer is either A or B. A or B. Now, had, it, had this been the real exam, and if, it, if, you find, if you find out that this is taking you too long, or if you don't know what to do with it, or if you're not in a mood, mood, uh, mood for it, sometimes that happens where you're just not motivated, you're not in a mood for it, then at this point, you've narrowed your ask to 50-50. At that point, what you say to yourself is the technical term, which is the hell with it. And you flip a coin and you pick one and move on. That's it. 50-50 R is a very good R on a hard question. But if you wish to continue go, uh, going a little bit further in the journey, we'll continue. It's not that bad. We'll see something happen. We'll see something happen. So already we know the answer is not C, D or E. It's got to be either A or a B. Let's continue our journey, shall we? We're going to continue our journey. We're looking for first 20 terms. Let's do the sixth term. Let's do the sixth term. A sixth. A sixth is going to be 1 over 6 minus 1 over 8. Again, we see a positive 1 sixth and we, we see a negative 1 sixth here. Let's put them in a the box here so we can distinguish them instead of putting them in a circle. We see a positive 1 sixth and a negative 1 sixth. They drop out. You see? Same as so on and so forth. As we go to the A 19th, we'll get 1 over 19 minus 1 over 21. And then we finally A 20. The 20th term will have 1 over 20 
minus 1 over 22. Now 1 over 22, nothing is going to happen to it because there is nothing else to take it out. There is no positive 122. It's part, the last positive quantity that we see there is 1 over 20. So negative 1 over, 1 over 22 must also be in the answer choices. Oh, I think we're done. It must, the right answer must also contain negative 1 over 22, which is answer choice B. Answer choice A has no negative 1 over 22. There you go, we are done. The answer is B. But if you want to carry on, you must also realize that here we see a positive 19, here we see a positive 120, the one before, A18, A18 would have been 1 over 18 minus 1 over 20. There you go, minus 1 over 20. This 1 over 20 and this 1 over 20 will drop out. Similarly, the 19 part will, be drop, will drop out because you will have, when you do the 17th, you will have 1 over 17 minus 1 over 19. That will take out this 1 over 19. This 19 will go out. We'll be left with these two quantities. Negative 1 over, one, negative 1 over 21 and negative 1 over 22 will never disappear. Therefore, the sum of the 20 term, the sum of the 20 term is, I need the room here, so we need to raise it. Therefore, the sum of the 20 term is, first two quantities that we just saw, which is which is 1 plus a half, we already, we already agreed on that, minus 1 over 21 and 1 over 22, which they are writing this, which they are writing in the answer choices as together in the parenthesis with the positive sign. There you go, that's your answer choice, that's the answer choice B as we already said, as we already pointed out before. Because you see the last term, Last term has negative 1 over 22, and answer choice A does not have negative 1 over 22. So this part that we did here actually was a waste of time. We didn't have to do that. We just realized that the 1 over negative 1 over 22 will never disappear because we have no positive 1 over 22. The only way we get positive 1 over 22 is when we get to the 22nd term. 22nd term starts with 1 over 22, which will take out this negative 1 over 22. So negative negative 1 over 22 must be in the correct answer choice, which means the answer is not A, it's B. There you go. I will see you tomorrow, alright? Bye now.